San Jose, it's the heart of Silicon Valley. This is theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. This is Open Compute Summit. We are live uh, in, San, in San, uh, Silicon Valley. I'm joined by my co-host Dave Alonka for, for a full day of wall-to-wall -wall coverage here at what is a revolution in hardware, the Open Compute Summit. We're on Twitter, we're on CrowdChat, crowdchat.net slash OCP Summit V for five, the fifth summit. Um, again, great event, uh, my co-host Dave Vellante. Dave, welcome back, we're all live on theCUBE again, kicking off our fourth season of theCUBE. Um, got the gray hairs coming in, um, but uh, you, you look younger John. than ever, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's great to be with you again, John. This is our first gig together this January, although we've done a few in the East Coast, we've done some on the West Coast, so the Cube is back on the road again, it's a great way to start here uh, at the you know, heart of innovation at Silicon Valley. I, I love the way that you phrased it, I talked about it on my, my panel today. An, engine, an under the hood engineering reset that you talked about taking place here in Silicon Valley. What did you mean by that? Well, Dave, here's what's happening in Silicon Valley right now. We are seeing a sea change out of the cube for, for our fourth year, three years. We've been uh, being chronicles of the data. We've been streaming the, the knowledge from cube alumni, experts, entrepreneurs, CEOs, venture capitalists, and, and the message has always been the same: the convergence of infrastructure, the convergence of software. We saw it at original VMworld 2010, that big the software mainframe, you call it, I think, which was Paul Moritz's vision. We talked to Joe Tucci, we talked to all these people, the convergence. The iPhone tsunami that's hit. Now Samsung ships more mobile devices as it came out again today. Record iPhones, iPhones can't keep up with demand. The application market is driving the change. And, and this is causing the cloud to take center stage. So this is the year of the cloud. And I say that because, in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a hype way, because the hype's over. We had the, the trough of disillusionment now, it's in the meat on the bone, as we always say. This is the year of the cloud, and what's going on under the hood is the technology change around the hardware. Um, I was at the Mac 30th birthday party event this past weekend. All the guys who originally did the Mac, they were talking about 60 bytes they stole from the Finder application that killed Mac, Mac Pains, which is the first app. They were coding at such a level of hardware uh, excellence. This is the new paradigm that's happening now. And if you see what's happening in Silicon Valley, this is what the modern homebrew computer club would look like, except it's not computers, it's data centers. And data centers are powering the cloud. Software-defined innovation, software-defined data center, software-defined innovation is the future. You know, John, the, the year of the cloud, 2014, it was underscored and really crystallized to me at uh, AWS reInvent. I likened it to the downsizing days when all the applications that should be off the mainframe came off the mainframe, and the same thing is happening with the cloud. All the applications that should be in the cloud are going to go to the cloud. Now, certainly there'll be some, some holdouts, some of the harder to move online transaction processing applications, but the web workloads are clearly going. I think this year, I'll make a prediction that more workloads will reside in the cloud. This is a, you know, a, a, a unit number, not necessarily a revenue number, but more workloads will reside in the cloud than on-premise. So I think we're going to see that crossover point this year. Um, now we heard the gentleman, uh, Jim Lyons from Merck, talk about he's really enthusiastic about new workloads like analytics moving to the cloud. Not so enthusiastic about the rip and replacing the existing stuff, but I think what's going to happen, John, is the growth of new is going to you know, exceed 40% per year over the next five years, where the on-premise piece is going to grow in the low single digits, and ultimately it will become the market. The theme of this morning, Dave, this is, it was a packed house. First of all, I am in utter shock and fell out of my chair when I saw the total number of people this year. Last year, same sign of size here in terms of the venue, but it wasn't as packed. This year it's packed. You see the revolution happening. You see the hardware geeks, okay? This is where it gets interesting. And I brought up the Mac comparison about the, the Mac 30th birthday party. You know, there's hardware guys and there's software guys. And what you have here is the, the, the confluence and the intersection of hardware excellence and engineering, and you have software engineering kind of coming together. You're going to hear Mark Andreessen, uh, who is a uh, big time uh, Silicon Valley VC, pioneer himself, creator of the browser. He's going to be making things happen. Andy Bechtelstein, Martin Casado. We had, uh, obviously, Frank, uh, Frank who was running the open compute. These are the alpha geeks. It is a community of people, Dave, and I think that's why I call it the modern day version of what the homebrew computer club would be doing, because these guys are geeks, 
they're tinkerers, they're engineers, they're software guys, all coming together. And when that happened in our previous generation, the Mac was born and the rest is history. I predict this is a similar dynamic. You look at the kind of people involved and it speaks for itself. So Frank Frankowski, who came out uh, to ZZ Top music, he has big beard. I thought maybe he was a Red Sox fan, but uh, I thought that was better than Duck Dynasty. But, but he said that he talked about proprietary BS uh, and, and then I commented on the panel that that converged infrastructure is a $400 billion market, so it's a very lucrative market, and that's the market that OCP I mean, and this community is essentially aiming at, to really democratize that. Dave, I want to ask you about the panel. Obviously, you were up there in the panel. Were you like shocked when you saw how many people were in the audience? One, two, um, tell us about the panel. What did you guys talk about? It was the, it was the highlight keynote Ooh. panel of the event. Tell us about what you saw in the audience and what the panel is about. Well, the, the room was you know, not fire marshal packed, but it was really, a, a, it's a large room and, and a lot of people here, I think you said 2,500. So I'm actually very surprised at that number. That's, that's pretty good because we're talking about you know, the underlying hardware. The panel that we had really had so the, cust the voice of the customer, which was Tim Lyons from, uh, from Merck, and we had the, the standards, what I called the cat herders, Cole Crawford from OCP, and of course George Schlesman, the innovator from IO. And really what we're talking about, George laid out, said, hey, essentially the existing paradigm is broken. Here's what it needs to look like. George Schlesman actually pulled up his iPhone and, and did a demo, a live demo of, of deploying data center infrastructure on his iPhone. He said it should be that easy. He got a round of applause from the crowd. Uh, Tim Lyons of Merck, as I said, was, was not as enthusiastic about rip and replacing, but he's focusing on the momentum of the new applications and workloads like analytics. And of course, Cole Crawford's coming on uh, in a minute, and he's really excited about the innovation and the, the crowdsourcing, if you will, of, of OCP. So we're going we're gonna to dig into that. So Dave, I want to also add your perspective because to me, what I like about this event, and again, I get, get my, it gets my hair standing up on the back of my neck when I think about it, is the genius of Silicon Valley. And, and you know, there's a lot of things in the press uh, recently. Uh, you saw our venture capitalists kind of go out and compare this whole 1%, the Google busts are being you know, stoned uh, by people in San Francisco. So there's a, there's a change going on culturally in the Bay Area. And we are in Silicon Valley, although San Francisco is not really Silicon Valley. Uh, it's now becoming part of Silicon Valley because so much is happening up there. Um, but you're seeing the, the gentrification of San Francisco. There's a backlash against it. And what I think this represents is that inflection point where you put all the, the politics and BS aside, you have uh, a community of people who are engineering the future. And, and the future is a physical reset of the hardware. And you look at Amazon.com, they are the leader, in my opinion, of how they architected their cloud, you know, by accident, kind of on purpose, as we say, um, with Amazon Web Services, and their leadership is second to none. They're, in, they're commoditizing and innovating at the same time. They're disrupting. You mentioned some market figures about the proprietary uh, vendors. <laughs> it's pretty lucrative. Um, but that's what's going to be disrupted. So, so you have a disruption of a community coming together that are going to engineer the future, there's kind of an honor system going on in how they're engineering this, and a lot of people are participating because the rewards are great. So I want to ask you the question. Given the market TAM for the total adjustable market in the proprietary world, the incumbents, what is the opportunity from a disruption standpoint that do you see? So two things, John. I think the, the, the opportunity for disruption is absolutely enormous, but I will tell you this. I think conventional wisdom says that that things like uh, initiatives like OCP and the cloud are going to eat into that TAM and they're going to shrink that TAM. And I think that's, that's, that's flawed thinking. I think what happens is you've got proprietary infrastructure is a barrier to growth. And what's going to happen is, as, as we've seen this for decades and decades of tracking these markets, as markets are elastic, as the price drops, people buy more and it creates new innovation. So I'm predicting a renaissance in IT, in IT infrastructure, and, and I think that essentially value is going to shift uh, as it has been for the last you know, several decades from the infrastructure up the stack to the software, but there's still a lot of money to be made in infrastructure. Let's bring in uh, David Floyer. We want to get more of an analyst perspective. Obviously Dave's uh, the, the key analyst here with riffing on some of his ideas and what his thoughts are. But we want to go into the weeds. I want to ask some specific questions because there's a lot of nuances going on around what is available. For example, there is a huge threat to Intel. They're here, huge opportunity as well. So there's a challenge and opportunity for the big guys. The new incumbent player that's kind of broke out here at the show already is io.com. They filed for their IPO, so they've declined to come on theCUBE. Um, but they had a huge demonstration with the iPhone basically demoing 
how to provision massive scale on an iPhone. Pretty impressive, they have over 600 customers as uh, Frank came on on stage. Those guys got this IO cloud, how to go full scale enterprise cloud. Enterprise cloud is, is all the rage. David Floy, I want to bring you in, get your perspective. Um, why is enterprise cloud hot? And two, how does that compare and contrast to the research that you've done over the past four years around IO-centric infrastructure, hyperscale, hyperscale to the enterprise, Gary Orenstein from Fusion IO was saying it's bleeding over. Is it going to bleed over? Is it going to happen? Will we see hyperscale for the enterprise? Uh, that's, uh, thanks uh, for, for inviting me on theCUBE. And that's a very, very good question. The, uh, what I see is uh, a convergence of a whole number of trends that have been happening uh, very strongly over the, over the last few years. So there's been the trend, obviously, towards uh, the cloud processing outsourcing things that you don't, don't need to be expert on. There's the trend of convergence, of making things more cost effective because you can create uh, what I call single manageable entities, SMEs. So by pulling together the hardware, the software, and eventually the application into a single manageable entity, you reduce the cost. And the work that we've done at Wikibon about how much that cost reduces, every time you add on an SME, you are approximately double the costs of management of that infrastructure. And that essentially is converged infrastructure, is yes, it not? I mean, exactly. Frank was talking, you know, sort of rating converged infrastructure this morning, but essentially OCP is developing converged, converged infrastructure, and just not with all the proprietary PS lock-in. <laughs> Absolutely. You have got to have a single SME between the software, in which in this case particular OpenStack, and the hardware, in this case OCP. And by having those standards, and by creating that single SME for the hardware and infrastructure software, you can then go on up the stack and then add on the middleware, the databases, and the applications to create smaller numbers, but get economies of scale by having single SMEs as high up the stack as you can and drive out costs and, and, and drive a lot of innovation in all the different ways that you can provide those new services. So what's the advice for CIOs? I, think you, I thought you hit it right on with what Jim Lyons from Merck was saying is, you know, he wasn't enthusiastic about ripping and replacing, no, no CIO is, but essentially he was, our interpretation of what he was saying was don't worry about the rip and replace. You know, that'll take care of itself. You have to care and feed for that, but worry about the new innovative applications. Put those on the, the modern infrastructure, cloud, OCP-like uh, uh, capabilities. I, I think there are several things that CIOs really have to step up for. The first is that building your own data center is a wasted money. Adding anything to your existing footprint is wasted money. Over time, and as rapidly as possible, you should be moving that out into the mega data centers. Um, and the reason for that is twofold. First of all, you want efficient running of that. Um, you'll get that in the mega data center. And the second is you want to be close. You want your data to be close to the increasingly important amount of data from the cloud. And the cloud providers are going to be in those mega data centers, and you want to be able to move your data closer to that cloud. And at, over the next 10 years, there's going to be a huge increase in the amount of external data from the Internet of Things, from the cloud, from uh, social media. That is where the increase in volume is going to be of data that you want to explore, exploit, in order to drive your own innovation and new ways of marketing uh, as, as, a, as enterprise organizations and as governments. There's well. a tsunami of data coming. Obviously, that's been a thread we've been p pounding on. Uh, good, good observation. I want to ask you one final question before we go to our first guest, uh, uh, Colin from the foundation, also involved in OpenStack as well. Uh, what's your perspective, uh, David, on what to look for here? From a, not from a CIO perspective, you just talked about that, from, from an industry perspective. The Homebrew Computer Club changed the game. We saw integrated circuit create the, the, uh, the PC revolution, Apple, and that's the storied, storied uh, uh, movie now, and all the luminaries are talking about it. What here are you looking at that gets your attention that you're focusing on? Is it the fact that elements are now being retooled, smaller components? What are you looking for? What are the key things that, that, that catches your eye here at Open Compute Summit? Well, I, I think the excitement is that 
it's going away from lots of mini little SMEs, if you like, of, 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 of uh, uh, compute, of storage, of network, of all of the software, all of those mini fiefdoms that exist at the moment inside organization and inside industry. And people have to learn, industry has to learn, the, the, uh, the uh, people in those industries have to learn how to come together and make it win-win, how to be part of a open stack, how to be part of uh, these standards, open standards like OCP, like OpenStack, and contribute to them positively and add your value to the stack as a whole. By contributing in that way, you're going to add value, you're going to increase the, the rate of growth of uh, IT, the increase of importance of IT, and that is such a different way of doing it. So there's going to be need, the need for new leadership in industry to take on a new way of doing it. David, thanks so much for uh, coming on, I appreciate it. Dave, you know, this reminds me of, uh, of some of the commentary we said in the past around car buffs. Right, uh, we always want to know what the latest car is or whatever, and using that analogy, we are talking about a significant under the hood re-engineering going on where the impact of this new engine could have significant disruption to the marketplace. In performance, software, the components, the instrumentation. Uh, what's, your, what's your take and what are you looking for here in Open Compute Summit? And what are you looking for just overall from a Dave Vellante perspective? Well, my, my angle here, John, is I'm interested in how fast this all can bleed into the enterprise because the, the enterprise data centers have been a constraint to growth for decades. And that has to change. And in order for IT to have this renaissance that I've predicted, we have to start with the infrastructure. Everybody's talking about the software-defined data center. Let's start with the data center itself and work up the stack from there. And to me, what I'm looking for, Dave, is I'm looking for that magic that sparked the Homebrew Computer Club, because this is exactly the kind of perfect storm you're seeing. You're seeing innovation. You're seeing uh, disruption targets that are sitting there waiting to be disrupted. Uh, you're seeing innovation. You're seeing people coming together. And, all, and, and not just for the sake of coming together. It's not like kumbaya. There is real business to be done. So you see in beautiful balance and a great community environment. I think this is a new kind of open source we've never seen before. You're not, it's not the same as Linux, not the same as Apache. It's not the same as anything. It's a new kind of openness at a hardware level where there's some real technology engineering going on. It really is a magical place. And that's what I'm looking for is where's the magic? Who's doing what? Who's got the real deal? Where's the meat on the bone? This is theCUBE, we'll be right back with our next guest here all day live at the Open Compute Summit 5. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>